I learned very early in my IT career to value project stakeholders' rich domain knowledge. The company I worked for developed database solutions for hospitals, businesses, chemical processing plants and government agencies. So within a five-year period, I served as lead analyst on a diverse set of projects in domains I was often completely unfamiliar with. The first order of business in a new project was to develop a working knowledge of the concepts, terminology, business rules and workflows of the domain. Acquiring this knowledge improved requirement solicitation because I could engage more intelligently with the stakeholders. I could ask them pertinent questions, contextualize their answers, and ultimately deliver a better solution. In those days, the knowledge sources for a domain were the stakeholders themselves, information that we could obtain about competitors' products, often delivered by snail mail, and also the occasional book found at the local library. Nowadays, the savvy business analyst or requirements engineer has access to documents describing almost every conceivable topic under the sun. They come in the form of online product catalogues, providing rich feature descriptions, sample requirements, feature models, database schemas, and even high-level designs. The information we need to acquire the domain knowledge is therefore bare just for the taking. But too much data isn't always a good thing. We have to know how to process it in ways that are conducive to and supportive of requirements engineering. So in this podcast, I discuss a few basic data mining skills I hope you'll find useful for processing domain documents early during requirements engineering. Most of us use search engines every day to seek information. We enter a search query expecting the engine to return documents and web pages that are relevant to our topic of interest. Well, this is a great place to start in our quest for domain knowledge. Unfortunately, web search alone simply returns a set of documents and web pages that we have to then process manually. If we're fortunate, we'll hit the jackpot and retrieve a document that provides a comprehensive perspective of the domain. But if not, we'll have to read through many overlapping possibly unreliable data sources to find the information that we need. Fortunately, we can use data mining tools and techniques to help generate conceptual domain models from the set of retrieved documents. We'll examine some of these tools and apply them to the electronic health records domain. Perhaps one of the best places to start is by identifying terms that occur more frequently in domain documents than in the non-domain ones. There are a lot of online tools that can help us with this. For example, wordle.net takes a bunch of text and then generates a word cloud. If you want to see what one looks like, you can look in my physical column in IEEE software. I took 20 documents that came from PDFs, Microsoft Word, and just plain text documents that I had retrieved by the search query term electronic health records. And then I processed them into pure text, pasted them into Wordle, and then generated a word cloud. Intuitively, each word's relative size in the Wordle cloud depicts the relative frequency with which it occurs in the domain documents. However, Wordle focuses on single words, whereas phrases can often provide much deeper insights into domain concepts and the terminology of the domain. So we can extract nouns and noun phrases and possibly other kinds of phrases, eliminate ones with low domain specificity, compute term frequencies, and then identify the dominant domain concepts. Domain specificity basically measures the extent to which a term or phrase appears in this domain versus in documents from other domains. So again, in my column, I show the stemmed form for the top 20 terms and phrases that were extracted from the electronic healthcare requirements domain documents, which were returned from my initial web search. Stemming lets us group together similar terms. For example, the two words provider and providers both stem to the term provid, P-R-O-V-I-D, and you can see that this represents some form of the, of the stem of the two terms provider and providers. The number of extracted phrases can end up being quite extensive. 
In my domain, the algorithm I used returned 15,000 domain-specific terms and phrases. However, only 404 of these had more than 10 instances. So if we apply filters that filter according to frequency, and uh, we can usually reduce the number so that we come up with the terms that are truly important to the domain. So if you were to look at the data, you would see that several dominant concepts emerged. These concepts include terms such as healthcare records or phrases such as healthcare records, workflows, health initiatives and veterans of veteran affairs. So these phrases could be really useful for us in the requirements engineering process. We could consider them as possible terms or phrases for including in a project glossary, or we could use them to trigger discussions during the requirements elicitation process. Generally, by looking at these kind of um, domain-specific terms and phrases, it can help us to consider what kind of focus groups we need to lead or to look at the requirements that we've elicited and see if we've kind of covered each of these concepts. But that actually still isn't enough. Simply listing terms is not sufficient. Some of the terms are going to end up being related, for example, clinician and care provider, and so they could be grouped into some meaningful topics. Although many topic modeling algorithms exist, I used one called Latent Dirichlet Allocation, or LDA, which models topics as mixtures of terms. However, even if we use such algorithms, automating the naming of each topic is quite difficult. And so the names that we produce or that are produced automatically are often just a bag of words or the most common terms that occur in each of the topics. In my column, I show names of each topic that were manually created. Topic modeling during domain analysis, however, can help us to understand the domain's dominant concepts. We can find the right number of topics to direct our topic modeling algorithm through trial and error. In the example of the healthcare system domain, three of the topics that emerged represented security and privacy with terms such as privacy, protect, secure, breach, notice and violation. A second topic was healthcare provision with the terms health, patient, inform, which came from information, electronic, work, provider, care, order, hospital and medic, which of course was a stem from medication or medicine. And then another topic was drug, pres drug prescriptions with the terms prescribe, prescription, guidance, interoperability, drug and transaction. So now these topics are a little bit more meaningful even than the phrases we came up with previously. They can again be used to focus brainstorming sessions or can serve as catalysts to ensure that the right subject matter experts have been engaged in the requirements engineering process. Although I can't show you this in my podcast, we can visualize the topics in various kinds of graphs. So in a graph format, we can make the nodes represent the size or the importance of the topic to the domain and we can connect topics together or connect the nodes together so that we see relationships that occur between topics. Presenting data in this way provides a bird's eye view of the domain and visually emphasizes each topic's importance. So in this podcast, I've shared ideas that represent the tip of the iceberg when it comes to data mining for domain analysis. There are many other interesting tools and techniques that could be used. But I hope that you can see the potential for leveraging data mining solutions early in the requirements engineering process and using them to help you understand some of the concepts and the topics of the domain so that you can perform a more effective requirements elicitation and analysis process. Mm -hmm.